going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going. We're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leverage to technology, and I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust. And we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American. You know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. The Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Bassick. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system has kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, uh, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Welcome to the Crypto Teacher, and guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances. And understand how the world really works, because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that it is all planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the books, Crypto Teacher and the New Road Order Book. Remember, the New Road Order Book shows you how the world really works, and it is definitely time for you to wake up out of that sleep, especially in the times that we're in right now.
And 2024 is going to be one of our most entertaining years. We have the presidential election. We have the drums of beating. We have the emerging markets going to be flipping the switch on the fourth industrial revolution. Now, we had the Fed signal rate cuts, but remember, guys, they haven't cut rates yet. So, like I told you, I definitely see a big pullback in the first quarter. Then the master magician set up a distraction so the Fed can cut rates, and then we move up. And also, guys, I want to thank those who purchased the three kids' books. It's time to re-educate. Also, much love to those who donate to the Cash Shop Patreon. Much love. Keep it coming. Guys, if you're not a part of the Patreon, make sure you're donating to the channel through the actual Cash App. But guys, this next Bitcoin and crypto bull run is going to be a utility run. So you want to make sure you have the cryptos that have real utility. And much love to those who are shopping at both stores. Keep it coming. And of course, guys, we get into Bitcoin and cryptos first. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And right now, we have Bitcoin and crypto slightly pulling back. We have stocks slightly up after getting beat down all week. But guys, all you have to do is pay attention to the actual indicators. Now, in crypto, guys, we have options today. At the same time, we know they need Bitcoin as collateral. So I do see a pullback and then us moving up. And then, guys, we're moving to the weekend. We know we're the only game in town. But we do have yield rates rising and the Fed repo dropping. So we know it's not going to be a lot of liquidity. Make sure that you're pulling a repo today. Now, we have Arthur Hayes says that Bitcoin could dump up to 40% in March. And guys, I know for a fact that Arthur Hayes is listening to the crypto teacher. Because you know I'm the only one to tell you that Bitcoin, crypto, and stocks are going to be dumping in the first quarter. Now, what's the percentage? We got to pay attention to the distractions, and we have to look at the Fed. But we're definitely going to have a pullback. Now, is it going to be 40%? No, but we're definitely going to get a pullback. But Arthur Hayes is definitely listening to the crypto teacher. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. Now, guys, do not forget to pay attention to the actual indicators and how soon things have changed. We see yield rates rising. We have the 10-year back over 4%. Had no reason to drop anyway because it was all from the Fed, Jerome Powell, saying we're going to be cutting rates. Of course, the bond market did the work. But the Fed hasn't cut rates. We had jobs reports today. And guys, we know they manipulate those job reports. Everything is fine. And inflation is still at 3%. So right now, they don't have a reason to cut rates. But we know that distraction is right around the corner. And then we have the dollar up. So we know if yield rates are up, dollar up. We know that's not good for markets. We have volume in crypto slightly down. Tether, USDC, and TUSD. And we see TUSD market cap is falling big time. And then, of course, guys, we have the Fed. Repo at $664 billion yesterday. Yes, you heard that correct. Make sure you're pulling it today. It's one of the signals to see what type of weekend that we're going to have. Now we have the Bank of Spain selects partners for CBDC testing. And the wholesale CBDC pilot would take place in the next six months. Now, guys, if you read this article, if you didn't know any better, these central banks already have these CBDCs prepared. We've seen test after test after test. We can go through all the documents, the PDFs. These CBDCs are ready to go. Remember, guys, this is a plan. It moves in phases. And then we have Nigeria Central Bank green lights CNG and stablecoin to launch in February. And remember, the whole globe is moving lockstep to this digital economy. And either they're going to have a stablecoin or CBDC, and they're going to be programmable. Being able to tell you what, where, and when and how to buy, and you have three to six months to spend it or poof. It's gone. Remember, the machines are going to take over 60 to 70% of the workforce. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. 
Now, guys, do not forget about Grayscale, sent about $34.5 billion. And we have EtherSpot Bitcoin ETF likely coming soon. And we know as soon as we do get the Spot Bitcoin ETF, Ethereum is definitely going to follow. But remember, guys, these ETFs are just giving you the exposure, taking away a lot of the volatility out of the actual product. Remember, we already have spot Bitcoin ETFs in other countries. But getting over into a little crypto news, we have crypto lenders Celsius to unstake $470 million in Ethereum ahead of repayment. And in the first quarter, guys, we're going to have a lot of selling pressure. Plus, we have yield rates rising. And don't forget that Goldman Sachs guy, Mike Novogratz. Now, we have TRM Lab says that North Korea was responsible for over $600 million in crypto thefts last year. And guys, we know this all about the boogeyman. You got to have one. And we know TV has programmed the people, and social media is definitely programming the people 10 times faster. And that's the reason why the sheep fall for the boogeyman and the Hegelian dialectic, the divide and conquer. It works every time. And then lastly, guys, we have India's digital rupee crossed a million transactions in one day. And when it comes to the mainstream media, everybody knows that China is rising, but India is rising right along with them, but don't get the media attention. When it comes to the fourth industrial revolution, India is definitely leading, and then on top of it, China and India are the largest populations. So just think about all the people in poverty, and all of a sudden they get airdrop free money. They're not going to mind being told what, when, when, and how to buy. And that's the reason why you have immigration inside the United States. The people that's coming from overseas inside the United States right now, they're going to be happy to get the free money. They're not going to be complaining like the people in the United States. We're used to freedom. And I'm going to do a Patreon video on the goal of all this immigration because where I'm at, it's like it's a whole nother country now, and it just happened over the last two years. It is amazing. So when you go back and look at the start of America, it all makes sense because they're doing the same exact thing. Guys, they're using the same playbook. And don't get me wrong, looking at Bitcoin, crypto, looking at the money is wonderful, but you have to look at the agenda. Don't get distracted by the devil's tricks. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. But that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books. Crypto teacher and the new world order book. Plus the three kids books. It's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, 
So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part one, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part two, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part three, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.